After nearly three decades covering the Buffalo Bills, this guy knows what he's talking about. Welcome to Sal Speak, the place to be for hard-hitting analysis from Sal Mayorana of the Democrat and Chronicle. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Sal Speak. We're on Facebook Live today in the Democrat and Chronicle studio uh, at 245 East Main Street. I am Sal Majorana, and I'm joined, as always, by my, our great sports columnist, Leo Roth. How are you doing, Sal? Leo, thanks for being here great. once again. Holy cow. Yes, I know. You are the greatest, <laughs> Leo, of all time. You see me with my arms? I'll leave now. My arms in yeah, that video? I, you should have been doing there. I there like that. that. No, no, you, you fill that screen up well. Uh, yeah, that's, that's I've caught more crap for that move <laughs> in the history of moves ever. <laughs> All right, today's show, we've got tonight, we're actually taping, or doing this show live, and there's a game tonight. The Bills are playing the Jets in their home opener at, at well, I almost said it, Ralph the Wilson Ralph, Stadium. I know, it's you got to catch tough. yourself. New Era Field, uh, the Bills' new name, new, newly named stadium. The Jets are in town for Leo, what already, and it's almost ridiculous to say it, but it's a must-win game. And, I, and I'll say it's a must-win yeah. game for both teams. Neither one of these teams can afford to start 0-2 with the schedules that they have coming up. Yeah, and you, you know, you alluded to your column. It's hard to say a must win now, but I believe this is the kind of team that if they start 0 2, they can start 0 4. Yeah. Because it's a, a Rex Ryan team, it kind of just lives on emotion. And it's just this roller coaster. And, it, and it's a, this is a team that needs to gain some confidence. And if they go out and lose tonight and they start, you know how it is, <laughs> they start doubting themselves a little bit. A lot of new players uh, on this team. Not all young, but a lot of new guys. Right. And as we saw in Baltimore, boy, they were rusty. Uh, that was, uh, you know, Sammy Watkins' term, rusty. I don't, I don't blame Rex Ryan for not playing anybody those last two preseason games, but I think it came back to bite him. Yeah, I do. I, I, I do kind of blame Rex for that. I, I don't like the fact that usually that yeah. third preseason game, you let your starters play a bit, get their feet wet, get some – you know, togetherness going, and he really didn't do that. And I, I think Sammy was right. I thought in that game Sunday afternoon in Baltimore, they were not on the same page, offense or defense. Even though yeah. the defense played pretty well, I just thought the whole team was kind of out of sync, and it certainly showed up on the scoreboard. Um, so maybe that was a mistake by Rex. At least we can say that everyone came in healthy. I mean, everyone who, well, was, he, everyone who was healthy going into yeah. the end of the preseason there was healthy going into the first game. I got game. the benefit of hindsight here, but I know he, I mean, he, was, he was scared to death of losing a key starter. Oh, sure. And, you know, with all the ACLs he had and, other, and his two top picks going down, you know, I, I, I get what he was doing. But, geez, that was a bad, bad debut, yeah. bad opener. And now, you know, it's hard to say, but they, they say that people might think we're a little bit crazy or we're alarmists. But the NFL season, it's not, it's long, but it's not that long. 16 no. games. 16 and you, games. And they all count, all matter. And like I'm just saying, and this is, I just sense this team being so much about momentum, being around Rex, so much about momentum, momentum. If, if I'm going to say, if it starts going down, if it's 0-2, Arizona coming in, yep. and then New England, New England, who is, by the way, is 1-0 in the division. Amazing how Jimmy Belichick can plug in parts and just keep on going. No, I mean, it, I mean, it really is. I'm, I'm sorry. It's it's a, it's week two. The Bills can't afford. Think about this. If the Bills lose on Thursday night, on tonight, tonight, uh, they'll be 0-2. They, you figure 10 wins is what they have to get for the playoffs. They'd have to win 10 of their last 14 games now in this scenario against this schedule. Leo, I look at that yeah. schedule. I don't even see seven wins because I thought they would start 2-0. I picked them last week. I am picking them tonight. I thought they would get off to a 2-0 start. And even with a 2-0 start, I thought it was going to be a major, major difficulty for them to get to the postseason because yeah. of the schedule. If they go 0-2, where do you see 10 wins on this schedule? Well, you know, last week when I was, you know, being a Mr. Optimist, this was one of the games. AFC opponent, the Ravens, yep. get them now before they get better. Uh, they lost this one. The other key one is at Oakland later in the year. Mm -hmm. Those, that's how they might have gotten to 10 wins. Now they threw this one away. Right. It's, it's, it's not there. And People, it's also an AFC game, uh, if, if for heaven, if, if by luck they're in, a, in some kind of wild card picture. Right. It was, a, it was a big loss. People get all wrapped up in the division games, and this is a division game tonight. You know what, though? There's only six division games. There's yeah. 10 other games. I always, you know, when it was eight division games, before they, they changed the, yeah. the alignment, then Conference the division right. games were huge. But New England's going to win this division. So it's not going to matter what the Bills are in the AFC East. What's going to matter if they get to the, you know, playoff contention is what are they in their AFC games. 
that's going to be big, and they've AFC already thrown is, our way. Yes, AFC is huge, and uh, and like you said, the schedule. You know, and and the flip side tonight for the Jets, they played better than the Bills last week against the Bengals, mm -hmm. but they they did lose by a point. Yeah, and it's big for them. And they're they're, the they're, same boat, they're doing the same theme. They're talking about the same thing tonight coming into this. This is a tough bounce back situation for the Bills. I mean, this is a uh, you know, same with the Jets too. Yeah. Heated their schedule, right, their schedule rivals. is worse. Yeah, they, early, they, the they Jets' early schedule really is bad. worse at the top right yeah. now. If they if they go all into, they're in, they're in so they're trouble. looking at spots too. Like, well, we can't lose at Buffalo tonight. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and they're saying the same kind of thing. So, but it is tough, and we'll get into some of the matchups. Yeah, we're going to move on. We're going to talk about um, a few things here. Um, the offense will be a topic that we're going to start with right now, and we'll delve into Tyrod Taylor's performance last week. We'll also talk about the offensive line really laying an egg and how they've got a huge test against this great Jets front three and then we'll get into Sammy Watkins' injury and then later on in the show we'll go over to the defensive side we'll talk about how Rex Ryan you know he talked up this defense we all thought he was crazy they actually played a great game yep. more than good enough to win last Sunday and then we'll finish off with just the matchup Ryan Fitzpatrick coming back to Buffalo again so we'll start on the offensive side and it always starts with the quarterback and Tyrod Taylor in the first game of his new contract did not live up to it, Leo. I thought he was bad. He was bad. There's no other way to put it, but bad. <laughs> Gee, the, the, the flashbacks, because when they gave uh, Ryan, <laughs> yeah. Fitzpatrick, Ryan Fitzpatrick in town, when they gave Ryan his big money, he proceeded to go in the tank, too. But it was one game. Yeah, it was disappointing for Tyrod, because so much uh, uh, preseason hype about him being, you know, uh, taking that next step, and he didn't take a step at all. He took a step back. And a lot of talk about him, uh, and I talked to Greg Roman on uh, Monday, um, Greg Roman, you know, hey, he was, uh, uh, he, he was very accountable. He was putting it all on himself. N a nice job by the coach there, to, yeah. you know, taking some of it off. But really, and I did ask him a little bit about, and I know a lot of fans have talked about that this week. At some point, this is why you got a guy like Tyrod Taylor, a dual threat, a guy that can run and, run and pass. If, the, if things aren't working, I think at some point Tyrod's got to say, i got to do a little bit more here. i got to make something happen. Yeah. And... Interesting to read some of the comments from the Ravens about how they wanted to make him a quarterback. quarterback. And I don't think that was a, a knock on Tyrod, but they didn't want, you know, that they didn't respect him as a quarterback. But obviously, the job they did on him was tremendous. I think he had, what, 11 yards rushing? 11 yards rushing. And, you know, they, they did what, you know, they kept him contained fairly well. He had a couple Houdini plays, the nice mm -hmm. touchdown, uh, or, the, or the pickup on to the, Clay. On the touchdown drive. On the touchdown drive. But my, my point with, with Roman, I asked him this, doesn't he have to do more? Do you, what's it like with him? And Greg was about, he goes, well, you know, he's, uh, he's a quarterback until he decides to run. Yeah. So he, and, and what it's he a wasn't, feel. What he wasn't last week, Leo, was joystick Madden Tyrod Taylor, <laughs> right. which is what we saw a lot of last year. We saw it once on Sunday. He made that incredible play on the 33-yard pass to Charles Clay, and he escaped a sack, and it was an amazing play. Right, right. And, you know, after that play happened, and they went in and they scored, I'm really thinking, did okay. Did you sense momentum? I did. I sensed, like, okay, they got that out of the way. Now they're going to feel better about themselves. They'll go on and play well. They just hit a wall. They, they went thud after that drive. The second half, I think they had 80, I want to say 85 yards the entire second half. Now, not that Baltimore was much better, but yeah. it was just an awful offensive performance. Part of it, of course, was the offensive line. Now, this was a group that brought back all five starters. Year two in Greg Roman's system. They know each other, how to play with each other on that line. Mm -hmm. And, man, Baltimore's front seven got after them, and they did not let the Bills get any yeah. push up front. There was nowhere for LaShawn McCoy to run. And then they flushed Taylor out a number of times. It was just a bad day for and this, the offensive and the line. Jets, and the Jets' front line is, is better than this one. They're, they're, not <laughs> just, they're not just big and aggressive, but they're more talented probably. Yeah. And they, and they, and, get, they get, and, they, and they get Richardson back best, this week. Their best player comes back. Who was on suspension last week. Um, He'll be fired up to play. Yeah. That, and, and, Cordy, and there was no Cordy Glenn tonight. No Cordy uh, Glenn. Yeah. Talk about a, a, a tough spot. I was, I did have a lot, I do have a lot of faith in this line. I, I, I it was, it was bad. It was not a good showing. And when the, the, the Bills swept the Jets last year because they ran the ball. Mm -hmm. I mean, they ran it with some conviction. They really did. I don't know if, I mean, Carlos Williams would not have been available for this game anyway with the suspension. I think they're going to miss him a little bit. Well, I think I don't, so. I, I mean, I nine touchdowns last year. I don't want to see Reggie Bush. I just don't want to see yeah. that. 
I, I they didn't. They what. didn't run anybody else last week. They didn't run Jonathan Williams. They didn't do use Gillisley. Reggie Bush, man, I don't know if he's got anything so, left. Is, you know, you're not going to give the ball to McCoy 30 times. No, you can't. So Mike Gillisley. What are you going to do here? They, well, they got to they got to use those other backs tonight. Yeah, I think I think, I think he even said that Gillisley. I don't know what happened. Why? Well, they only ran 48 plays. I think well, that was part of it. 48 plays. But I think yeah. they're going to use Mike Gillisley. He's still he was still battling the concussion from preseason, and I right. think maybe he's finally back to. I don't know if it's 100, percent but maybe he's more ready to play this week. Because Rex insinuated that yeah, we're going to have yeah. to get him the ball more often. What that means for Reggie Bush. I don't know. I mean, Leo, I, if I never saw Reggie Bush carry the ball again, I'd be fine. However, I still think he can be a useful guy in the pass game. I think Red they can bring pass, him out there yeah. and get him in the passing game. So that'll yeah. be interesting to watch. Either way, the offensive line has got to play better because if they don't get it done, this offense is going to fail. It I think you, fail. I think you hit on it, though. It's staying on the field. It's converting third down. Three of 13, they were 48 plays. You've got to get into the 60-play range. You've got to get up there. That's that, You have to – you have to – and then, and then the, obviously, the more plays, more they can use more of your personnel. Right. But it was horrible. Five, they had five three and outs. The most disappointing to me was with about five minutes to go. It's a, it's a yeah. game they can win with a touchdown. That drive. We're all, we're all talking about. Uh, Tyra Taylor's got to pull games out at the end, and they, 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 they pull out a, th a three, a three and out that went for negative eight yards. It takes a stupid delay of game penalty. I know. All so things. That, that was just so game. disappointing. So it was. I was like, wow. I know. Um, Tell, let's talk about Sammy yeah. Watkins. Yeah, it was a bizarre Monday. <laughs> you were over there. I was flying yeah. back. Leo right. was over there Monday. That was, I, I'll tell you what happened after the game. Um, and I had said, I, I already said this, I, during the game, I thought he looked pretty good. We go in yeah. the locker room, and as I'm going in, Sammy and one of the trainers was walking out, going across the hall to the x-ray room. That's and we're like, room. well, when did he get hurt? He was, I didn't even see him limping. So then the next morning, you're over there in Buffalo. Tell us what was going on over there. Yeah, well, the early reports in the morning started servicing from uh, the national writers uh, that, that, yeah, he had, a, he had an x-ray. Um, the Bills at one point feared he may have rebroken his foot <laughs> that has the screws in it. And Sammy's just in a lot of discomfort, uh, severe discomfort, and maybe they're going to shut him down. Rex, and then, so we got Rex right away first at, at, in his uh, presser, and he was not, you know, not like, no, he's fine. He was like in that, in that Rexy kind of way like, well, we'll see how he is, how he progresses, keeping this, kind of keeping the story going even. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, when we saw uh, uh, Sammy in the locker room, he was, he was definitive like, what's going on? I, I'm, I'm playing, yeah. I'm fine. And he didn't have a walking boot, seemed okay. Um, you know, I'm, we're, not, we're not medical uh, experts, but the point is, Tussell, is that he, did, he, is on the, he is on the injury report, he is questionable, and I think he is gonna be sore yeah. Week in and week out, um, and it's going to be a, a matter of him managing it. And and he did. And, and Watkins did talk about this mental side of that. He's got to get over this. Yeah. He he and had the same issue with his hip. He had yeah. to mentally get over the pain that he felt in his hip. He said he might he request an X-ray every week until he's right <laughs> mentally. But you know, okay. you think about so. how how important are this guy's feet? I mean, they're yeah. his whole game. He is a speed receiver. He has to be cutting hard, running fast. And if your foot's sore, I mean, you know, they're football players. They're supposed to be able to take it. But he's also a human being. And if there's pain in there, it's yeah. going to be a difficult injury. It's not like it's a shoulder for him or something else. These are two pretty important parts of his body, the feet. And if it's yeah. going to be hurting him, that's going to be an issue for him. Yeah, and I wonder about the, you know, what percentage he's at. Is he 100%? I don't think he's ever been 100% he, he in his career. Yeah, no, and he didn't, say, he didn't say he was 100%. He was trying to throw figures on it, 90, yeah. whatever. You know, I just... Um, and, 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 and you know, because we, when we, for that hour or so when we were contemplating this offense without Sammy Watkins, and I'm, Scary we're thought. asking Ryan about, uh, you know, Greg Salas and <laughs> Marquise Goodwin oh that, God. that got targeted once last week. <laughs> and I'm saying, boy, it, it, it's alarming how thin the receivers are. You look around the league and you see teams that have two, three guys that can beat Well, you, you know, but we, we knew this coming yeah. into the year. I mean, that whole competition they had for the third and fourth spots, yeah, it's great to have competition. The problem was none of those guys were really any good. So no matter who was going to win that job. It, right would have been great, it would have been great competition at Syracuse. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Seriously. But there's really nobody you can rely on. Marquis Goodwin. How could you ever rely on him? No. Greg Salas is just an, an NFL journeyman. Um, Walt pa or Walter Powell is a guy who's never even really played much in the league. You know, a after Robert Woods, who is also 
probably Oof. better suited as a number three guy. They have nobody back there. Yeah. This passing game, I think, is going to suffer unless unless they really get Charles Clay involved. Well, we haven't even talked about Clay yet. And Clay's McCoy dinged. And, and Clay's Bush. dinged. And Clay is dinged. Uh, let me go. Let me go there. I, I want to. I wanted to mention Charles Clay. I forgot to say it yeah. in the top. He had the one big play last week. Nothing to do with him, by the way. It was Taylor <laughs> making a great escape, and, and Clay just happened to be open because the Ravens the Ravens couldn't cover him for six seconds. I think Charles Clay has you, got to become more involved in this yeah. offense. They signed this guy to a $38 million contract last year, and he really didn't have much of an impact. I think he had three touchdowns before he got hurt, and he missed the last three games. It just wasn't – I don't think he brought um, the impact plays that I thought we were going to get yeah. from him. And in week one, nothing looked any different to me. I, love, I mean, I loved him when he was with Miami. I really thought this was a, one of the up-and-coming tight ends in the league. Mm -hmm. Greg Whaley apparently – Doug Whaley. Doug Whaley apparently thought the same. They signed him quick, and, they, and I think if I recall, it was an offer sheet kind of deal. Yeah. Where they Miami they were match. they were throwing him big money right away, so Miami couldn't match. You know, I it's a little too early yet. I don't want to write him off, but you're right. He, you know, he's into his second year now. He's got a he has a chance, or he's got a, this team needs another dynamic target. Don't the best offenses have a productive oh. tight end, right? I mean, really. Absolutely. You look around the league, the best offenses always have a tight end who can take some of that pressure away from the outside Really good guys. tight end and at least two really good receivers. And I don't know if this, right now we're scratching our head and wondering yeah. if they have one and, and the one Is hurt. has issues. <laughs> uh, let's go to the defensive side because that was an area of, of positivity last week. You know, Rex was, you know, blowing smoke all summer about how this defense, despite all the injuries, Reggie Raglan, Shaq Lawson, this and that, um, he said this defense will be better than it was last year. Week one, they were. Now, Baltimore is not New England or Arizona. Okay, let's be honest. That mm -hmm. offense, I thought, is very... Their best receiver really is Steve Smith, who's 37 yeah. and coming off an Achilles. Flacco is a good quarterback. I've never put him, I don't care about the Super Bowl ring, I've never thought of him as an elite quarterback. He's a good quarterback. Yeah. So they didn't play a high-powered offense, but I thought they played a good game, more than good enough to win a regular yeah. NFL game. I like that they, they, they figured out their, the, the pass rush. They got pressure. Mm -hmm. I mean, I they jury, had four jury, sacks, right? Yeah, jury use looked great. Uh, and uh, Lorenzo Alexander, the new starting yeah. outside linebacker, Doosable. got in on it, and Doosable had the and other sack. Yeah. So their front line did a nice job, and um, their front seven. I, there's some encouragement there, and I think they're getting, you know, Preston Brown played well, uh, Zach Brown. I kind of, there's it's not right. a lot to knock there. You know what was surprising? I looked at the play sheet, and I really thought that they were going to use spikes for like half the game against, mm -hmm. you know, run plays, and they would use Zach Brown. Brandon Spikes played eight snaps. Yeah. They, they really didn't utilize him. Zach Brown played the majority of the game on, on the inside. I was a little bit surprised like their, by that. Yeah, I like their, I think they, they like their two inside guys, the yeah. Browns. And, uh, you know, the you thing know. is, Leo, we talked a lot about, you know, Reggie Raglan and Shaq Lawson, their top two picks, aren't going to be available. The bottom line is those guys are probably going to be very good players in the future, but they are rookies. Mm -hmm. And they've replaced those two guys with some NFL veterans. So maybe some, it won't be as bad as we think. Yeah, no, and I think we talked about that last week. I, I can see that. I can see this, you know, not, not being the, 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 so such an alarming uh, development. With the, you, you lose your two number one picks. It's like, oh, my God. Yeah, I mean, it hurts. <laughs> no doubt it hurts. <laughs> but I guess, you know, and then we, but with some perspective, we say, yes, they're, they're rookies. A, they've never played. We don't Zach know who Brown's they are. Zach Brown's a 50-year linebacker. Guys, yeah, and very, very productive uh, Brandon beforehand. Spikes. So and, I think they Alexander's been and I like Alexander's kind of been healthy now and he's finding um, he's a he's a nice kind of rangy type of guy yeah. he's a uh, and he's healthy again and I still can't believe though that he's the other I, edge. I, I know I know he's you're the other edge rusher on Jerry Hughes you got to give him credit last week there yeah. they're throwing everything at him because he really is the only legit pass rusher they have with Darius on mm -hmm. suspension he somehow found a way to make two sacks last week yeah he good. did it's a big you know Hughes could have a you know because everyone the knock on him is that he well he, he didn't do it he can't do it without Mario and right and, the, and the, the Darius and Kyle Williams inside doing what they do um, how, how did you think Kyle Williams looked? Um, I think he looked okay. I didn't really watch him all that much, um, but it seemed like he was fine. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I'm not really worried about Kyle Williams. I know coming he's 33, off his, uh, coming off a major injury, and I'm not sure what his stamina will be. I mean, yeah. he, there might be a point. It's only week one. There might be a point where he starts to get worn down and maybe he tails off. But for the first game, I thought he was, I thought he was fine. If this defense has a nice month, sell and, and then they get uh, Marcel Darius back, uh, you know, it's a fifth game. They might be all right, and then Rex, you know, they're going to 
uh, the Rex will have an ability to snap there and crawl. <laughs> the big thing again is, uh, and isn't it during the 16 years I, I wrote it this week, I said that's the, none of us want to be alarmist here, but we've been, we've seen this before. Mm -hmm. the, the crux of the, the Owen 16 streak is that just as soon as one unit becomes decent, <laughs> the other unit on cue goes downhill. Yeah, they can never get it together all, all at All three once. phases, are they all clicking, are they all good? No, never happens. Yeah. And that's, the, what, that's what they have to do. Consistency out of all the phases of their game. And then, and then we can talk about, this is a team every week you can, it has a chance to win. All right. Um, so we're going to wind down, and let's talk about Ryan Fitzpatrick, our old buddy, uh, former Bills quarterback. Um, he's 1-8 as a starter against a Rex Ryan defense. That includes, I think there was one game when Ryan was still the coordinator in Baltimore, and he was playing for Cincinnati. He was 2-5 and five and with the Bills. as a Bills starter, and 0-2 and um, and last year. Last year playing for the Jets against the Bills. So <laughs> Rex has had his number. Um, and, and Ryan was funny because in his self-deprecating yeah. way, he sort of said, well, you know, I, I'm not exactly a Hall of Famer. So yeah, Rex has had some success. <laughs> not like he's having success against, you know, Brady or whoever, Joe Montana, right? It is Ryan Fitzpatrick. Last year in the two games, Leo, I looked it up today, Brandon Marshall and Eric Decker, their two wideouts, yeah. they had pretty good days. One was a night against the Bills. They combined for four touchdowns in those yeah. games. They lost both games, but those guys were a dynamic duo. They're back again. I, I, I wrote it this morning. I think one of the big matchups tonight is going to be those two against the Bills corners, Stephon Gilmore and Ronald Darby. That'll yeah. be a very interesting. So with that being said, it's going to fall to Fitz to not <laughs> throw three picks in the fourth quarter well, say, like he exactly. did last year in that and then, game. And then in the game in New York, another big Thursday nighter, I think, with the colorful jerseys right. that will, the uniforms we'll see tonight again. I still can't believe the Jets lost that game. I, I know. Mean, they were knocking on the door three times, I think. And well, then, the, Bill, they blew, the Bills blew a big lead, and the yeah. Jets were, like, going to roll right through them. And they the were end. right down there, and they didn't put it in the end zone. Fitzy did and, these Fitzy things. And that, was, that, that one gnawed at him. And then to come into Buffalo needing that win to go to the playoffs. They were in with a win. And so, yeah, they, the Jets got a lot on their mind here coming in tonight, and they don't think they haven't forgotten about that. This is huge for them. They, they, this could set them up for the rest of their season, too, and make atones for last year. And Fitz, hey, you know, I think we all like Fitz. I think we all appreciate oh, what I, he's accomplished. I, Fitz is great. And I, I think, you know, when he gets going, he can be a, a, he can be a pretty good quarterback. I know. Yeah. He threw for 4,000 yards last year. Yeah. He set the all-time Jets record for touchdowns with 31. Joe Namath played for that team. <laughs> yeah. They had some good quarterbacks in their day, and Fitz has that record. So, yeah, Fitz, the problem with Fitz is he does Fitz things. He will throw the interception mm -hmm. at the absolute worst time and kill you. But if you put him in the right offense, and right. if you look, Jan Gailey is the offensive coordinator and, there. And that's where he's he had his the, most success. He was the head coach in Buffalo for all three of Fitz's starting years, and Fitz put up some pretty good numbers. So, you know, the Bills' defense, I think, will have a good test. And like you said, Fitz is coming in here. He said this week, you know, there was a lot of emotion in the first game back in Buffalo last year. Yeah. Well, that's out of the way now. Now it's just another road game for him. And there's not many guys left on this Buffalo roster no. that played with him. So that part of it is gone. And I think Fitz will probably come in more focused and maybe even more determined to beat the Bills. Yeah, tonight. I think you'll see a very relaxed beard tonight. <laughs> he'll, uh, he'll come in and, and, and play, play a much better game. And the Bills' defense uh, better, better be ready. Yep, I agree. All right, folks, uh, we were on Facebook Live today. I, I wish we had gotten some questions. They really didn't see many questions. We're doing this every Thursday afternoon at 12.30, so bookmark it or whatever you, whatever you do on Facebook. Remember, come back here on Thursday afternoons if you want to be part of the show. We had some good participation last week, but this week, I don't know, nothing, uh, nothing really struck people. They're, maybe because, they're maybe, tailgating. So maybe because right. they lost the game and no one wants to talk about the Bills. Yeah, they're, they could be at the stadium there right now, which already is what tailgating. we're going to be doing pretty But soon. we would appreciate um, our, our fan base participating, so get on Facebook Live, Democrat and Chronicle, and uh, get in there, watch the show, and you can watch the replay later if, you know, if you're out there and your friends missed it, tell them about it. Also, the uh, podcast for this show is going to be available on iTunes. You search Sal Speak, uh, iTunes and Stitcher actually for Android, and you can find the audio recording in podcast form for the show. So I want to thank you for being here today. I want to thank Leo for thank you, uh, his expert analysis that he gives every week. <laughs> and we will talk to you uh, next Thursday, but also follow us tonight on Twitter. From, we can't call it the Ralph anymore. The, the cap, lid. The, the lid, lid, the cap, whatever yeah. they're going to call it. The lid. Follow us on Twitter tonight. 
and then read all of our stuff to, uh, on the Democrat and Chronicles website uh, tonight and tomorrow morning. For Leo Roth, I'm Sal Mayorana. Have a great football week.